Hello, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to take a quick look at using ProPresenter on a Mac Mini M1. Now this actually was a video that I did as a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, and during the live stream I actually completely lost my voice. By the time I'd finished I couldn't speak at all. So I'm re-recording this intro and I will close the video out as well. But the actual bit in the middle is from the live stream training. So so hopefully you'll find this helpful and please give it a thumbs up if it's something that you have found helpful and as always it's great if you can like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, all those kind of things really help. So if you can do any of that, that will be amazing. Thank you so much. Here's the video. Okay, I'm just looking to see how long we've been on air for. Um, we are doing all right, I think, at the minute. So I am going to take you through a few things on ProPresenter and we're going to look at, um, well, I want to show you a way of getting video out of ProPresenter and particularly if you're using the Mac Mini, the M1 Mac Mini, the new little Mac Mini. I know a lot of people have upgraded to that, that Apple Mac and I use my, that's what I've got here, that's what I use myself. And I do really like it, I think it's a great computer. I've um, done, done a number of tests on it and I might do a video on them at some point, but I've done a number of tests comparing the iMac and the little Mac Mini, the new Mac Mini. Um, and for a number of things, I think the Mac Mini outperforms the iMac quite comfortably. And it works great as a ProPresenter machine, it really does. It does a really good job of it. But the one thing that's limited on it is you do only have the ability to put two HDMI feeds out. Now, one of them, of course, is going to be your um, display for the uh, person controlling ProPresenter, which then only leaves you with one additional video output for um, your congregation. And if you want to then put a stage display monitor up as well, you've run out of outputs, there's nothing else that you can do. Except there is a workaround and I'm gonna teach you that this evening. That's one of the things I want to show you in ProPresenter and through this software is how we can set that up and how we can do a workaround to enable another video output from ProPresenter. So as I say, my setup here is the Mac Mini M1 um, computer which is underneath this desk here. Um, this computer screen here is my control monitor so I can see here the um, display for the, the controlling the probe center. Now you will see if I cut to this shot over here you will see I have my multi-view window up on here and I want to particularly take a look at these two windows over here. Um, now those two windows are going to be, uh, this, this one here is the HDMI output feed from the Mac Mini. So we've got HDMI 1 going to my control monitor, HDMI 2 going into the Atom and up to this display here. And then my second uh, output here is actually coming from what's called NDI. NDI video is another way that we can get video out of the computer and I'm gonna talk a bit more about that in a minute. But I've got an NDI feed set up displaying um, a second feed and at the minute I've just got them duplicating so they're both just displaying the same image but these could be a congregation display and a stage view display. I'll show you in a minute why I've got it set up this way, but um, that is what we're looking at here. So this one's HDMI straight off the computer. This one here is NDI. So what is NDI? Well, let's just take a minute to, to ask that question. So NDI is um, effectively, it's a networked video signal. So we can send video via our computer network. And this is a, it's a kind of growing technology. It's something that's been coming through over the last few years. Really, it started off only kind of in broadcast and it was used for a lot of kind of big broadcast situations, but it's kind of starting to filter its way down into more kind of consumer and prosumer level um, gear as well now. So we're seeing it more and more on things like PTZ cameras. You might have PTZ cameras which give you an uh, NDI video out. 
And you can even now buy just little simple conversion boxes so you can convert from HDMI to NDI and then you're just transmitting down a standard Cat5 cable so you can just run a standard network Cat5 cable and it can run over um, a standard network and you can use it to distribute video through your building to either to other rooms or other locations or uh, even within the same room, you can use NDI to send that video signal um, just via a computer network, via a Cat5 cable. I'm just going to have a quick mouthful of drink. So, ProPresenter actually allows you to output something directly to NDI. So in ProPresenter, I'm not going to show you this right now, but um, hopefully some of you will uh, know ProPresenter. And in the screens option, um, there is a thing for con configuring screens. And inside the configure screen window, you have the ability to be able to tell it where you want all the outputs to go. And ordinarily, you're going to send them to an HDMI port or something like that. But one of the options, if you if you go down to the drop-down menu, drop down the, the, um, the various options down there, you will see output to NDI, and you can output this video to NDI. And that's what I've done here. So I've set up two video outputs, one of them on the HDMI, one of them on the NDI, and they're just duplicating the audience screen output. So they're both sending the same image out onto our NDI. However, once you're sending your signal out onto your network, you then need to pick it back up again off the network somewhere and bring it back into something. And to do that, what I'm using is a Raspberry Pi computer. Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> Not a good time to start losing my voice. So for those of you who don't know, a Raspberry Pi is a very small little computer. It's about the size of a pack of cards. It's a relatively basic little computer, but they do do a fairly good job of running kind of simple standard little programs. And I've got, I've actually got two of them. So there's this one, and then there's another one that's just underneath the desk down there. And this um, Raspberry Pi down here is running a program called Die Caffeine. Now, what I might do at some point is do another whole video on that software and how do you set that up on your Raspberry Pi. But for now, just know that it's running just down here, running this little piece of software. And that piece of software will just look at your network. So you connect it up to the network and it will look at the network and it will um, find a video source on that network and say, here you go, I found a video source. Do you want to display this? And you just say, yes, display that video source. And it then opens up full window, just showing you that video output. And so that's exactly what I've got here. Now, if I switch back to this camera view, you will see here, as I say, we've got um, the two, you, you, I think hopefully you'll just be able to see this on here, the two um, windows displaying our <coughs> two outputs. Now, the reason I've done it this way to display these two um, identical images is because there is a time delay, and this is the one downside of this solution. There is a time delay between those two outputs. And if I display this, I've got a timer clock here. And if I set this timer clock up, I can um, run this through here for you. And now you will see these two clocks counting down, but you can see that they are something like a second and a half out or something of that sort of nature. In fact, if I just um, stop it there. Um, yeah, it, I, it's hard to see this actually. Um, yeah, it's a it's about a second and a half, second and a half to maybe two seconds out. Um, and this is the one thing that I've found as being slightly problematic with using this NDI video feed. The NDI 
does seem to cause this delay. Now, I don't think it, it's not to do with NDI. As I say, NDI itself as a protocol works really well. And as I say, it's been used in broadcast situations and it's been used in all sorts of situations. Um, so it's not an issue inherent to NDI itself. I suspect it's um, due to the fact that I'm running it through a Raspberry Pi. I think that's where the problem probably lies. Um, I have no other way of picking up an NDI signal at the minute that means I can test it and run it through uh, this system. You can pick up NDI feeds into things like OBS, so I guess the other alternative would be to set up another computer, open up OBS, <coughs> pick up the NDI feed in OBS, and then I can view it through that and see how that deals with it and see whether it's any better through that as an alternative. But in terms of being able to get a stage view display out onto, say, something like a TV or something like that, this is a very simple, quick, convenient, easy way to be able to do it. You can quite easily put that behind a TV and it will just display this NDI feed for you quite happily. But as I say, the one major downside with it is that it will only um, work with this slight delay on there. Now, Personally, I don't think that's a huge issue for a stage display monitor because um, generally speaking, a stage display window will show you the song lyrics of the song you're currently on and the song lyrics that are coming up next. And if it's slightly delayed in switching from one to the next one, actually you're already going to see what's coming up next anyway. And so that one second of delay for it to move across I've tried it and I've sung along to songs as I've flicked through the words on, on, on ProPresenter um, and I don't find it that big of a problem. So I think it is a workaround, it is a solution that could work for you. However, if you really do want something that's very, very critical and you want to make sure that there is no delay in there, um, you might want to look at buying a, a dedicated NDI converter and I think that also would solve the problem for you that would be the other solution to do this but they are reasonably expensive you'll be looking at a few hundred pounds to buy one of those NDI converters so it's not a cheap solution but if you want something that is uh, much more accurate uh, then it's probably a better way to go. So all of that means that this is a a feasible, feasible, viable way of getting a third display out of a M1 Mac Mini. So if you're running one of these M1 Mac Minis and you want to get another display output out of there, this is a great way to be able to do it, using your NDI video out. And um, as I say, I think it's workable. I think it works very well. As long as you're aware of that slight, that slight time delay, um, there's no major problems in it. And for me, I think it's a fairly, um, simple, quick, easy way of being able to produce a third output with a stage display for ProPresenter or something similar in your church. So there we go, that was the training. As you can hear, my voice was really starting to struggle by the end of that. So I'm gonna close this out here. Thank you so much for joining me. As I say, if this has been helpful, please do subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and share it with people. It's really helpful if you can share these videos with other people, um, that really helps the channel. So anything like that that you can do will be amazing. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.